Hi, welcome to According to Pete. Uh, sorry, it's been a long time since we've done one, but we've got a really cool thing we're going to do here for you today. Um, what we're going to do is build an EVP pickup coil. What does that mean? That means ghosts, man! Now, I want to introduce <laughs> you to Elizabeth. Hi. Elizabeth. Um, now, we hired Elizabeth a few months back. Uh, we were actually looking for a documentation person, um, and she applied for a part-time position, but we got a, a look at her resume and was freakishly overqualified. She used to be an engineer for the DOD. Um, and so we were like, oh, we really got to get her in there. Well, this other thing that she brought to our group was this um, over-the-top interest in ghosts and paranormal. And me being the paranormal dork that I am, I was like, oh, oh God, oh, God, oh, God. So um, we got her in the office, and uh, as soon as she gets here, I'm like, oh, Elizabeth, I got to talk to you about all my ghost stuff. And so I told her about um, one of these things that I built a long time ago. Now, before we get too very in-depth on that, why don't we talk about EVPs and what that action's all about. Elizabeth? Thank you. Yeah, so in the paranormal field, we deal with EVPs all the time, which are actually electronic voice phenomena. And the problem with EVPs is that there's not a lot of science behind a theory of them. And I mean, pretty much it's just paranormal investigators going into a room with a digital recorder, asking some questions, and not hearing responses with their ears, but when they go back and play their audio later, they find that there are spirit voices on the other end. And we don't really, there's not a really solid explanation as to why that occurs in the first place. So that's kind of where we came in with this. We do know that it picks up something that we can't hear with our ears, so that means that some imprint is being done on the device itself. Um, and then we can also see from that that it's in the same frequency range as that of the human voice. It's just being picked up with EMF in the magnetic field versus with, um, with sound, I guess. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. Okay. So let's expand on the uh, hypothesis of why we think EVP works at all. So suppose you've got um, a spirit standing next to you. Hello, I'm a spirit. Now, they don't actually have a mouth, right? It's, it's an observed phenomenon. You can pick up something, something, not necessarily a voice, I'm not gonna say that, something on the recorder. If it is a voice and there is a spirit, then one way that it could be happening is that since they don't actually have a mouth, but they're still speaking, they are propagating audio waves, not through the air, but through the electromagnetic medium. If that's the case, then on a recorder like this, what's happening is those electromagnetic wave fronts are coming into the circuitry and they are impressing themselves on the very tiny little antennas that make up that circuit, okay? For a very long wave RF signal, which a voice signal would be, right? It's gonna be in the kilohertz range. And you've got tiny, tiny little antennas there. That's not gonna work very well. So something like this, it's a very, very big antenna. Well, okay, it's, it's basically 100 lines of 30 gauge wire, which is what we're gonna reproduce here. But it's a much better antenna than something like that. To build the coil requires a couple of specialized parts, starting with parts reel that I use as the form for the coil. What I have here is basically one of our parts reels that I snagged from downstairs. I've taken some EPP foam and I've hot glued it between the two layers of the parts reel. Now, when you set up to wind the coil, what you want to be careful of is to not kink any of the wire. Because if you end up having a kink in it, you stand the chance of having the wire break. And this is a bunch of work to do, so if, you, if the wire breaks, it's basically useless. I've got 30 gauge magnet wire on the left, and I've got my uh, coil form on the right, and I'm just very carefully winding from one to the other without actually twisting the conductor at all. I did 100 loops of 30 gauge magnet wire. It does not have to be 100. The actual value of uh, the inductance is not important. Uh, this is just a pickup coil, okay? Now to pull the coil off of the form, what I've actually done is uh, just separated one side of the parts reel, and now I can snake some string underneath and around the winds. And at the end of it, I just tie the ends off, and I take it outside, and I shoot it with Plasti-Dip. And that's basically it. 
Now you've seen how we built one. I'm gonna show you one that I actually did a little earlier. Uh, okay, it was about a week and a half ago or something. This one I sprayed with some Plasti Dip and I had some tape around it, but the tape all came off. I've also got a cable on this one along with a uh, TRS eighth inch stereo jack so you can plug it straight into a recorder. And what I'll be able to do now is take this and potentially pick up on electronic voice phenomena. But it won't only pick up on that, it'll also pick up on all the other stuff that's in the atmosphere. So for instance, I actually took this home with me. I walked around my house and I was able to pick up on the electronic devices in my house, uh, 60 hertz, uh, all the, the powered fixtures and everything like that. And it was very interesting. What I found was this. This is what played for me. You hear that? I can hear it. It's and 60 is, hertz. Yeah, it's 60 hertz. And this is what would happen as I approached certain light fixtures and stuff like that. I could then take this, hook it up to a scope, and analyze the waveform better to really decipher between the junk and the electronic voice phenomena that we pick up. So if there's science here, we're going to find it. Welcome to Alma Cemetery, also known as Buckskin Joe Cemetery. This is all that's left of the original Buckskin Joe, a mining camp established back in 1859. But that's not all that remains. Sightings of a veiled woman visiting the cemetery throughout the years are thought to be the spirit of Silverheels. In our search for silver heels, we ended up coming across some other things that were quite disturbing. The wrought iron and wooden grave enclosures belonging to children. I think these are all infant graves, man. Infant graves? As this seemed like one of the oldest parts of the cemetery, I thought this would be a good place to start our investigation in what seemed like an onset of a storm. I started setting up my mail meter, ghostly gadgets e-box, digital recorder, PSB 11 spirit box, and of course, Pete's EVP pickup. Although, probably not the best idea to put it around my neck. I don't know if you want to wear an antenna while it's raining. <laughs> the spirit box I thought would be great to use out here in the mountains. We weren't picking up on any stations that might have caused interference or be falsely mistaken as EVPs. So I knew that if we had any voices come through intelligently responding to our questions, it was most likely a spirit. Is there anybody We only got a few hits on the spirit box, but it was interesting what did come through. At this point, we decided to start exploring more of the graveyard. I left Pete's antenna behind to see if it would pick up anything without disturbances from any of the equipment we had on us. The best thing that came out of our communication with the spirit box had no mention of silver heels, but from a spirit named Michael. Hey. What's your name? I heard them. Mike? Michael. Michael! <gasps> I heard that clear as day! I was really surprised we came across anything at this investigation. When I went back to review the audio from Pete's EVP pickup, there was clear evidence of interference from being around the other equipment. When it was by itself, I did come across some strange voices that could have possibly been EVPs. In conclusion, I think the antenna itself would benefit from having a preamp added to it for future investigations. I will add, the pickup coil did of course pick up one familiar message from the e-box, so until next time, 